Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, we will troubleshoot a multi-area OSPF network in which neighbor relationships aren't properly forming and routes that should be advertised are not. Let's get started. First, let's go on R1. Enable, show IP OSPF neighbor. R1 has become OSPF neighbors with R2, but not R4. Show IP protocols. Looks like R1's interfaces are in the proper areas. As you can see, they're both in area one. However, you may notice one problem here on R1. R1 isn't advertising its loopback of 1.1.1.1. If I go on R2, it won't appear in the routing table. Enable, show IP route. Indeed, it's receiving the 10.14.0.0 route, but not 1.1.1.1 from R1. Let's fix that on R1. Conf T, router OSPF 1. Network 1.1.1.1.0.0.0.0, area 1. Also, the loopback should be a passive interface. Passive interface L0. Okay, now let's check again on R2. Show IP route. There it is. So we fixed our problem on R1. Let's go on R4 and see what's the issue. Enable, show IP OSPF neighbors. Indeed, R4 has no OSPF neighbors. Show IP protocols. Can you spot the problem? R4's G00 interface is a passive interface. This means it won't form neighbor relationships on that interface. It will still advertise the network on that interface, although in this case it has no neighbors to advertise it to. Let's fix that. Conf T, router OSPF1, no passive interface, G00. Now R1 and R4 should be trying to form an OSPF neighbor relationship. I'll wait a few seconds. Okay, now let's confirm with a show command. Do show IP OSPF neighbor. There it is, R1 and R4 are OSPF neighbors. Next, let's check out R2. Show IP OSPF neighbors. It's formed a relationship with R1, but not R3. Show IP protocols. I don't see any problems here. 10.12.0.0 is in area one, and 10.23.0.0 and the loopback interface are in area zero. Show IP interface brief. Here's our issue. It's not an OSPF configuration issue, the F20 interface itself is administratively down. Show run. There, you can see it has the shutdown command configured. Conf T, interface F20, no shutdown. Okay, now let's see if it's forming a OSPF neighborship with R3. Do show IP OSPF neighbor. That's odd, R2 still isn't forming an OSPF relationship with R3. Well, we fixed the issue here on R2, so let's go on R3. Enable, show IP OSPF neighbor. So R3 has one OSPF neighbor, R5. Show IP protocols. Can you spot the issue on R3? It's 10.23.0.0 network should be in area zero, not area two. Conf T, 
router OSPF1, network 10.23.0.0.0.0.255, area 0. Okay, now let's wait a few seconds. Okay, and now let's check and see if it's forming a OSPF neighborship with R2. Do show IP OSPF neighbor. Okay, there it is. R2 and R3 are now OSPF neighbors. Finally, let's see what's wrong on R5. Enable show IP OSPF neighbor. So R5 has successfully become OSPF neighbors with R3. However, in the lab instructions, it says that the routes R5 is receiving aren't being properly summarized. Show IP route. Indeed, R5 should be receiving a 10.0.0.0 slash 8 summary, but it's receiving individual network routes instead. So there's probably another issue on R3. Let's go back. Uh, let's see how or if R3 is summarizing. Do show run. Area 2, range 10.0.0.0.255.0.0.0. There's the problem. It's an easy mistake to make because we want to advertise the summary to Area 2. You might want to use the Area 2 range command. However, the correct answer is Area 0 range. I'll copy this command. and then paste it here and cancel it with no. Now let's put in the correct command. Area 0 range 10.0.0.0 255.0.0.0 Remember, the area range command uses a regular mask, not a wildcard mask. Okay, let's go back to R5 and see if it's receiving the summary route. Show IP route. Okay, there it is. We have successfully fixed the problems. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT, or Basic Attention Token, donations in the Brave browser.